OK, uh, so this is our second lab. And in this lab, we are going to use the ER diagram or the ER model uh, to help us design tables that can be used in uh, most popular relational database. Uh, specifically, we are going to create several tables that we are going to link those tables together. So we are going to define relationships and um, by using ER diagram. And ER diagram will also can be converted into SQL code that can be um, executed in most relational database. So in this uh, lab, we're going to use this online uh, website that you call the, uh, generate my model, so which is at least uh, has a free version that we can use for our lab. And there are also other tools that are available. Um, and also some are free and also some are not free. Uh, but I, f I found that um, this one worked pretty well for me. So if this is our first time to use that one, so you may need to sign up an account. Uh, or if you have an existing uh, Google account or GitHub account, so you can also log in with your Google account or GitHub account. So here I'm going to use uh, logging with my uh, Google account. All right, so here you can say I logged in with my Google account and um, you can see my uh, previous uh, projects. So I'm going to start a new project. And for this new project, uh, so you can see you can create different type of the project. Uh, so for this one, I'm going to create a project for the relational database, so RDS. OK, um, and I'm going to create a blank uh, project. So I will call it uh, lab2. Uh, so I think you, um, I might be wrong, but I think you have to put that one as public. Otherwise, uh, it will not be free. So I, I just put it as public and then I hit create. Again, there's a concise version of this tutorial on my YouTube uh, channel. So if you want to uh, follow that one, so feel free to go to my YouTube channel and check that uh, one that is faster. But here I'm going to do step by step. So here, I have my project that I created, that is for RDS. Uh, and then I'm going to open the editor. So we can do everything online. All right, so here you can see uh, I'm now on the diagram page. So everything is empty. Uh, so here you can see you can add tables and you can add columns to the tables and you can link different tables uh, by adding reference. Uh, so let's say I want to add my first table and for this table, so if you double click, you can define the table names. So our first table will be professor and I will add in the I will now add the columns so you can drag columns. By default, that will be our primary key, but the primary key I will call it email. Or I will call it uh, professor email, so I will call it P email. Um, and for the date type, so right now you can see the properties is uh, open. See so here you can see the property channel. So we're here you can check uh, diff, at different constraints. So like whether or not you want allow it to be non value. Do you want to add some check like we did in the first lab, but instead here we're doing it uh, in this ER diagram. Do you want that to be unique? And do you want to set a default value? Um, so here since the primary key uh, is a the professor email so I think you don't need to check the others because it is already a primary key and for the date type because I want to use uh, the uh, the email so I think the chart 
uh, will be the appropriate one. And you can guess, give it a good size. So here I just type 50. OK, so that is my first one. And let me continue at the second one. So the second one, I will call it professor name. Um, and I'll give it a, a little bit longer size. Um, and uh, I don't think it can be now. Uh, and I don't think it should be unique. So I will just uh, uncheck the nullable and also unique. Um, and I don't think it should have a default value. And let me continue office number. OK, uh, so this will be office numbers. I just call it office. Um, and also character. And I think this one can be short. So I just give 10. And I think that can be none because uh, some professors, you may not be able to find out their uh, office information. OK, so that is my professor table. And let me go ahead and add my second one. So that will be the cost table. And for the cost table, we will have uh, the cost number. OK, and the cost number will be a character. And so I'll give it, let's see, about 10 character. Um, and that is the primary key. And the second one will be C name. And also that is a character. OK, uh, I guess the varying character will be better, actually. So I will call it 20. Uh, yeah, I will change all the others as a uh, character varying. Because then, um, so um, in that case, if you have, say, less than the size, so um, the arc post Jerry circle uh, will not fill in spaces. So yeah, it's interesting. I didn't see that one here. OK, uh, character, varying character, um, and also room number. So room number, and I think 10 will be fine. OK. OK, and then I will add a foreign key. So the foreign key means that the, each course has one unique professor. Uh, so to make sure that um, the form key had the same data type, so I just simply can copy this one, this column from the professor table, and then I just paste. OK, and then I uncheck this one. OK, so I uncheck so the, the pro professor email will not be a primary key on this table. OK, and also you can decide whether or not this is nullable, so I, I think I will not check that one because each course must has one uh, professor. OK, and next I'm going to create the student table. So student. And uh, the first will be a student name. Uh, sorry, the student ID. So student student email, actually. So as email, and that will be also a very a varying character, and I gave it fifty. And the student name, and a varying character, and I gave it one hundred. Um, and also student major, so. Because student major is is only column that called major on student table, so I would just call it major. Um, the type I just call it varying character, and the major I think can be very short. Okay, uh, so that is for the student table. 
Um, and as I said, that student in the relationship between students and those courses are many to many. So to enable to handle that one, we need to have um, an enroll table, so a correlation table to resolve that many to many relationship. So for this table, I call it enrollees. And I would not leave any, I would not have any spaces on the table names or on the column names. So instead, I just use underscore to separate those letters. So I copy student email to this table. And this is not a primary key. And I also copy the cost number. And this is not a primary key. OK. However, those two columns together will be the primary key. So I'm not sure that uh, that delete was necessary or not. But yeah, just select both together and uh, select both as a primary key. OK, uh, so here you can see uh, we have four tables. And you can also add index, so you can see which one do you want. You think add index will be necessary. Um, let's see, we add an index um, to a column. Let's say we we want to check a student email a lot. Okay, so we add that one. Okay, so this uh, student enroll list has an index to student email. And let's say we want also for the cost, we will also want to add index. And that index can be added to the, let's say, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the room, let's say. We want to check because we want to find out the room allowed. Um, you can also add more indexes, uh, so if you like. Again, remember that adding more index will also slow down the speed of insert and also delete, update, etc. So you just you should only add index uh, to the columns that you need. Okay, next uh, we are going to um, add the reference, or we are going to add relationships. Okay. So the first is course and professor. So we already have the foreign key here. So one course, OK, uh, we have multiple professors. Um, one course can only have one professor. And one professor can teach multiple courses. OK, and now you can see that this is many to one relationship. And you can see the P email on the course now has also a K icon. So that means this is a, a foreign key. Uh, let's also add one more constraint. So let's say that um, all the uh, offices should be unique. OK, so let's also maintain that uh, constraint. And similarly, we can link uh, the relationship between enroll list and our student table and also enroll list and also cost table. So let's say student, OK, and also cost. All right. OK, so this is the ER diagram that you should submit in your lab report. Um, you can see here we have four tables, and we have all the re required um, uh, attributes, all the, um, and also we have all the necessary constraints, and also we also define the the appropriate um, uh, data type. So I would I prefer using variant character so that you don't need you do you will not have the unnecessary space. Okay, uh, so before we move on, let's make sure that our model is saved. So. Um, OK, it looks like they automatically saved. OK, so that's great. Uh, next, let's say we're going to 
so we have those uh, ER diagrams. So we're going to generate an a, a piece of SQL code that can create those tables in our database followers. So let's go to the generator. And we choose uh, my generators, I remember. Oh, no, I, we, we have used uh, the sem uh, sample generators. And we are going to generate the for S database, SQL. And you can see PostgreSQL circle is one that uh, is supported. So let's write. Those code are not the SQL code. Those code are just a code that on the website that used for the Okay, so let's run it. Okay, and that will be saved as a zip file. So you can save that one and then you can unzip that. Okay, uh, so here I'm in my download folder and you can see it's in a zip file. So uh, you can use, like here I'm using 7-zip to, to extract the um, that folder and here you can see we have an SQL code and actually you can view that SQL code okay so here this is uh, the SQL code and we'll talk about SQL code uh, in the next week so um, I think but it's pretty straightforward so you can create a table if not exist uh, you can create table if not exists so cost table and also here we are going to define those columns and also we'll tell which is the uh, primary key and also we also see okay some tables are should some columns should be not noun and some should be unique okay um, and and also you can see here we can link those tables by create those by creating those foreign keys and also we can create those indexes okay so that is the sql code that's pretty neat um you can still go back and also change your diagram if you if you think something that you are not happy with uh, and then you can regenerate the code uh, those sql code and so you can download that one uh, so if you have problems in opening that zip file, select and also view those SQL code, you can also just preview the code here. Okay, and so you can see it's pretty nice that you can see those code that is already here on the right side. Okay, so I'm going to use the code that in the preview and I will copy those code and I'm going to run those code in post GRE circle so in the database so I'm going to switch to the PG admin okay so that the uh, uh, GUI that uh, can control and execute different um, uh, SQL code and also connect to our database so you can just follow the same instruction that as we did in the last week to go to your PG admin um, and then I will open if I will choose this, uh, uh, the schema that is assigned to my account, and I will say, okay, I will try to run some SQL code. Okay, it's in the tool, and also it's query tool. Okay, so this is the query editor. So I just simply paste the SQL code that I copied uh, from the website in the preview and I paste it here okay and then I just try to run it okay uh, so here I have an error because I already have an index uh, okay okay um, I think this is a Bug, that's something that <laughs> uh, the website can create. So here you can see we are going to create two index with the same index name. That is actually not allowed. So that for the first index, I'm going to call that uh, cause 
room index. And for the second index, I'm going to call that uh, enroll list student email index. Okay, and now let's try, try to run it again. Okay, so now it's success. And now you can see if I refresh my tables. Wow, okay, so I have <laughs> I have the cost table. Okay. Uh, you can see you have those um, columns that has been created uh, it, with exactly the same names and also the size. And also we have the enroll list. Okay, so you can see the columns and also see if the constraints, the foreign keys, primary keys, and also the index. Okay, so we do have the index that's not created. Uh, and also for the professors, okay, so the professor email name and also the constraints. And also, uh, I don't think I, we have index. No, we don't have index on that one. And also student table, okay, the student name major, and also you can check the constraints. Uh, okay, and also index if you have. Okay, uh, so I think the next step is that you need to fill in some records for each of the table. And also remember that you should save your table, or you don't just don't delete your tables, and we will use those tables in the next week. So uh, for example, for the cost table, or here for the professor table, so you can type uh, for the cost table, you can type see the cost number, so I, 340 and cost name it is called date mining the room uh, it is online and the professor email okay so this is the tricky part okay uh, so I should not do that in this way but okay since I already did uh, we will we are going to have an error so the reason we are going to have an error is because uh, remember that you have to have that professor before you can create this table. So if now we try to save it, we have this error because we don't have a professor that has this email. So that's why we cannot save it. So the right uh, sequence is that we have to go to the professor table first. Okay, and we have the professor. Okay, because that is a one-to-many relationship. Okay, uh, my office. All right, so now I save this one. So once we do have that professor, and you go to that class and now you save it so now you can see it has been saved okay because if you recall our model you do need a professor that to teach that class okay so that's why we do have the we have a, we need to have a record in the professor table and then we can create the class that that professor is teaching and that is the same story for the student table and also enroll list. So we we make sure we do have need to have a cost table and a record in the cost table and also record in the student table. And then we can create that enroll list. So for my student table, uh, we need to create some dummy variables. So s1 at jmu.edu. The student name is S1. Uh, the major is intelligence analysis. Okay. And then we create we fill in the uh, enroll list. Okay, so in the enroll list we must have that student. And we also must have that class. Okay, otherwise we will have errors. Okay, so now we have successfully uh, typed some records in those tables. So 
uh, you can try to type more records and also you can try to say okay so uh, uh, remember those uh, constraints that we set up and uh, see so if those constraints will also work for you.